Hello, welcome for watching my video again. Uh, before I go on, I would like to say that I'm not a native English speaker, so occasionally I will lose my mind. If you find there is uh, some kind of embarrassing silence for a while, please forgive me. Okay, so you see, this time sitting in front of me is a handgun. This is a Cybergun brand CO2 airsoft replica of Sig Sauer P226X5. Now, this gun has been just on the market for a few weeks and not much video reviewed yet. I just came, I just got mine uh, for a few days ago. I didn't really test it nor shoot it with it uh, seriously. So this video is not intended to be a detailed full review of the gun, but rather as a short introduction to the gun and some sort of my first impression. Now, as I said, this is a Cybergun brand, so it must be someone else made it. Who? Oh, it is made by KWC from Taiwan. In fact, this particular gun is not a completely new product. KWC has its own version of this gun for a couple of years already, and you can find detailed reviews of the KWC version. This Cybergun version has several changes over the KWC one to make it more true uh, to the real steel firearm. For example, it has a uh, fully adjustable rear sight in both elevation and windage, uh, different serrations on the slide. It has both black and metallic grade version, whereas the KWC has only black ones. It has the original markings and enhanced, and enhanced magwell. I never be a fan of 6 Sour P226. Uh, many people told me how good the pistol is, but I just don't being persuaded. I don't like the P226 mostly due to the length. Um, except Beretta Model 84, I'm not interested in any non-full-sized pistol. My definition of full size is something like a 1911 uh, Beretta, Beretta Model 92. Uh, Glock 34, 35, uh, Smith & Wesson MMP L version, something like that. Those have 5 inches barrel. Original P226 and Glock 17 are just don't look right to me. And I always complain about the high bore access of P226. Also, I don't like the location of the decocker either. Yes, it is very ergonomic, but I just uh, think it makes the whole gun looks poorly integrated together. However, this uh, six hour uh, makes some enhancement over this six uh, X5 version, uh, which I was appreciate. The X5 is under the X line of product, and the X stands for excellence, which is target on competition. Uh, the five means it has a five inches barrel. It has an extended brief tail and the curvature over the top of the back strap has been modified in order to lower the bore axis slightly. It is a single action only rather than the original single and double actions. So it omits the decocker and came with an ambitious 1911 style thumb safety. You can cock and save the weapon. Unlike the 1911, you can still pull the safety uh, put the safety on, even the hammer is decocked. You can also rack the slide when the safety is on. The magazine is an extended one and holds 19 rounds. It has an extended mag well for speed reload. Some options like an extended magazine release is available for customers to choose. The real steel firearm X5 has two generations already. There are even more improvements on the second generation, but I'm not going through details about it. This airsoft replica is based on the basic options of the first generation. So the magazine release is the standard one. I'm uh, slightly disappointed about it. Okay, um, my purchase of this gun is pretty impulsive. I don't really know there will have a such product being launched to the market. I even don't know about the X5 real handgun. Okay, uh, the real firearm. Uh, it is just someone suddenly posted several photos of these uh, airsoft in 
one of my WhatsApp chat group and say, hey, this gun is just came out. The price is pretty impressive. Anyone have interest? I mean, look for discount for bulk purchase. Okay. I look at the photos and think, okay, it is quite attractive, especially the metallic gray one. Uh, it is overall in matte finish with partially shiny hairline texture on the slide. It has a pair of plastic thick wood grips. The controls are black in color. Overall, it has some contrast to the whole gun, while the black one is pretty dull. And I know as time goes on, goes on, it will have some normal wear and scratches on the surface. The metallic gray finish is relatively close to the actual metal underneath. Those wears will be less obvious than the black version. So I place my order on the metallic gray one. Okay, so. Here is the box. You have the pistol inside. Okay, this box. This polystyrene form. Okay, it comes with one magazine. Okay. A hex key. Okay. A spare CO2 cartridge charging uh, screw knobs. An uh, additional one, a thread muscle attach uh, adapter. Okay, so you can put it on the muscle to attach something else. Okay, like this, and a box of zero to zero point two gram six millimeter uh, BB. Okay. Uh, it seems pretty high quality, but the weight is just too low for me. Okay, standard one, nothing fancy. Okay. Uh, just place under it, and also an instruction manual, very simple one, and a propaganda sheet. Okay. So. Get all these removed. Just leave the guns on. Now let's have a safety check first. All right. Okay. Uh, lock the slide back. All right. Give you some light. The hop-up chamber is empty. Magazine removed. The magazine is empty and uh, no CO2 uh, cartridge charge. Okay. So put it back on. So when I Pick up the gun for the first time. My immediate impression is, oh my gosh, the grip is BV. As I said, some people told me how ergonomic, how comfortable to hold the grip of P226, blah blah blah. But I didn't expect the grip would be such thick. Uh, give you a reference of my hand size. I wear number seven sterile surgical gloves. I would consider the grip of Beretta 92 is big. Uh, with factory grip piece is okay. I'm not sure about the Tokyo Marie, but the WE Biohazard Samurai Edge Edition is really very BV because its grip piece are thicker than the standard one. This cyber gun is almost as big as the WE Samurai Edge. Um, slightly shorter in distance between the front and the rear of the grip this distance. I won't say it is bad, but uh, just not up to my standard. The grip piece is made of plastic, but there are some fake woods pattern on it. Okay. However, as you see uh, on top of here, let's focus uh, here and. Here, uh, 
okay um, these gaps they don't fit the frame entirely the left piece okay even interrupt the slide release in my sample I couldn't release the slide by power stroke it okay I have to use a hair dryer to heat up and bend this group piece inward slightly to solve the problem some minor issue uh, there are some anti uh, slippering texture on the grip piece surface not too aggressive but uh, uh, but very effective and it has six hours low, uh, markings on it just remind you that the grip piece on the real firearm wasn't the same as this cyber gun uh, there are checkerings on the front of the grip I think they are too small and not very useful overall, overall the grip is comfortable to hold but I don't think it is as ergonomic as people said maybe it is my over expectation or just because of my hand, of my hand shape uh, coming up is the weight uh, after I placed my order I did some research research uh, it weighed 1219 grams okay 1219 uh, sorry I don't have a, a suitable weight scale I can only tell the figures just out of the box and I don't know the number of magazine uh, whether the uh, magazine is included or just the dry gun alone a pretty heavy gun uh, the following figures are my actual measurements the overall length is 224 millimeters from the masseum to the tip of the beaver tail um, 152 millimeters in height from the top edge of the rear sight down to the base of the magazine and 24 and uh, 44 sorry 44 millimeters in width at the safety level it is a true standard full-size pistol and uh, if you compare to 1911 or Beretta 92 it is just slightly taller and thicker as the standard magazine uh, and the enhanced magwell and the uh, relatively exaggerated uh, safety lever across now the sights it has an adjustable rear sight in both elevation and windage which I kind of like the front sight is briefer tailed uh, they are target shooting style and no white dot insert here are okay uh, it may be a little bit difficult to pick up uh, shooting in dark environment or dealing with black target would be a uh, disadvantage however as far as I know the X additions are modified for action shootings like IPSC or USPSA so I wonder why it came up with such setup anyway the sight radius is 182 millimeters the rear sight blade uh, just sit directly above the hammer okay uh, which prevents you from cocking the hammer manually okay I just could couldn't cock it except by racking the slide back let's talk about a trigger uh, unlike the real firearm the trigger of this uh, replica is not adjustable but there is still a hold in front of the trigger guard for at some realistic lock look uh, it has no function just cosmetic simply speaking um, the trigger sucks now as you see you just keep pulling the trigger Okay. Uh, it just breaks suddenly you don't feel any take up nor hitting the wall or something like that you didn't exactly know where it will break uh, let me try again uh, 
It is extremely spongy, gritty, and rough. It is almost the worst single action trigger I have ever deal with. The real firearm is single action only. This cyber gun or the KWC version is, however, single and double actions. The double action trigger is even worse. They are damn heavy. Let me demonstrate it. All right, even heavier than some most revolvers. Uh, just second worst other than the Nikant model uh, 1895 revolver in double action mode. I certainly will do some trigger jobs to improve this smoothness, but I'm not sure if I can, I can improve those spongy feeling. Uh, despite of the fact that uh, the trigger reset is tactile and audible. Okay. Here we are. Okay, once again. Reset. Okay. Uh, almost no over travel after the uh, hammer is released. Okay. So move on to safety. It is ambidextrous. Ambidextrous. The clicks are very positive. You can engage it whether the hammer is cocked or decocked. It disconnects the trigger and the hammer. As you see, when it is on, I pull the trigger, nothing happens. It has no decocking functions. The only way to decock a hammer safely is to remove the magazine and squeeze the trigger. In front of the safety, uh, we have the slide release or slide catch. This part is made of steel and uh, you can tell by its distinguishing color from the rest of powder coat controls. Uh, it is easy to assess, uh, nothing fancy. It is not ambidextrous and uh, left side operation only. I seldom use it during reload. I usually power stroke the slide to chamber around. I just use the slide catch to lock the slide back to clear some malfunction. So it's no big deal for me. Here is the magazine release, a standard version not the extended one. Now, I cannot reach it on my left side without slightly breaking the normal gripping. Okay. Okay, I can I cannot remove it, but I have to break the grip slightly. A little bit disappointed. It is only on left side and for right hand shooter. It cannot be swapped to the opposite side. Sorry. The gun come with one magazine only. Uh, 26 round capacity set on the box. It is also in met metallic finish matching the gun. Uh, the surface is a little bit rough, uh, but it drops freely. which is better than the previous cyber gun, Coke's 1911 rail gun. Uh, extra magazines are now already available, but only in black color. You can only load the BBs from the feeding lips. Okay. There's no widening gaps in here, so uh, you can only feed the BBs through here. Not a very convenient design. Okay. Uh, the slide is two-toned. The metallic grey finish with relatively shiny uh, hairline texture which reveals the underneath raw material. Very beautiful. That's why I pick up this version over the black one. There are two serration sections in front and the rear for you to rack the slide as usual and press checking. Very nice touch, although 
It is an airsoft gun with no practical usage of press checking. The serrations are very aggressive. Other than the essential component inside with lubricants, the rest of the gun is pretty dry. When you wrap the slide, it feels very rough. So the fit and finish between the slide and the frame is decent. Okay, not too loose nor too over tight. Uh, it is much improved over the previous Cybergun Code 1911 rail gun. There is a rail section. Uh, at the dust cover for you to mount flashlight which adds some tactical feel to the gun it is an add feature which is uh, which the real firearm do not have a unique serial number is laser print here okay the outer barrel is powder coated there is a six millimeter markings on the chamber I understand it has to be met with some jurisdiction requirement on some part of the world, but everybody hates it. <laughs> now, the slide fit with the fling uh, pretty well, but in contrast, the outer barrel has much more room to play. Now, I shake the gun and you can hear the rattling. Okay. Now, I press the slide firmly and shake it again. You see? Not much differences. It is from the outer barrel. It really degrades your impression of the gun. I just played a gun for a while and you see from the ejection ports. Okay, um, come on, get focus. Maybe it's too dark. Okay, here. Or maybe too close, okay. Uh, you can see there's already some scratch marks over here, okay. Uh, the muscle fret, the muscle is fret inside for you to attach another muscle device through the uh, include adapter. I don't think this feature is on the real firearm. Recently, almost all new airsoft pistol also come with these features. I really hate it. Come on. Please just follow what the real firearms counterparts. Uh, this is the takedown lever. Now you pull the slide back even further. Okay, it requires some additional force. Okay, until this uh, circular notch lines up with the lever, then you turn the lever ninety degrees downward. Here you are, and you can pull the whole upper slide assembly forward. As you see, the recoil spring uh, assembly here, okay? It is a two-section design. The thinner section is for usual recoil, and the thicker ver uh, section, I guess, is act as a shock absorbing buffer. This is not a common design in airsoft gun. In my memory, I could tell the Glock 26 and 33 by both WE and Tokyo Mori have similar feature. I'm not sure how effective it is to prevent cracking of the related component. Just let the time to prove it. Now you push the Recoil spring uh, assembly and the guy rod, guy rod forward. Uh, there is an insert attached to the hop up unit here. Okay. To lift it up, you lift this up. It's a little bit harsh. Okay, so it's done. Then release the tension carefully and you can take the whole assembly out. Now, be careful. Be careful. There is a washer inside the recoil spring housing of the slide. Okay. 
So now you can take the barrel out. Once you take out the barrel assembly, you can slide the inner barrel out uh, backward. There's no any tricky locking mechanism to hold it. Set it aside. Now here is the washer inside this uh, recoil spring uh, housing. Okay. The hop up is adjustable. And the hop-up bucking is a V-slot style. Let me get, yeah. I'm not sure you can see it. Let's have some lights onto it. Uh, okay. Here you are. Oh, good. It is located just right in, at the center, the hopper bucking. Oh, there are some play uh, between the inner barrel and the hop up unit. Hmm. That is not good. Okay, so you see, right? I press it down firmly. And you see there are some wobblings. The whole unit is fixed here. I press it firmly and you can see the inner barrel slightly wobble. Oh. Now let's check how tight the tolerance between the hop-up unit and the flame. Just put it back. Oh no. Pretty loose. A fair amount of play. I could see the accuracy of this gun is not going to be good. But I don't really I couldn't verify this soon. Well, I believe I can fix the wobbling between the inner barrel and the hop up units, but I don't think there will be an easy solution to reduce the play between the hop up unit and the frame. Alright, let's reassemble it back. Just reverse the previous takedown process. Put the barrel back. Now, watch out. The washer inside the recoil spring housing within the slide. Okay, make sure it placed correctly. Okay. It's a little bit tricky. That is a tricky pen. Otherwise, it will prevent you from inserting the guy rod. Okay. Okay. The spring is not captive. I'm not sure if there will be any negative impact if you don't install that washer back. I just I might suggest you to glue it in place. So move on. That's okay. Okay, here you are. Function check. Okay. So here is the brief introduction and my first impression of this cyber gun, Sig Sauer P226X5, CO2 airsoft gun. I know this is not a detailed review. I hope they will have my own energy and accuracy test soon. I will score this gun uh, 6.5 out of 10. 
it's not a very high rating, mainly because the very bad trigger and the wobbling at the barrel assembly. But if you are interested in this gun, I will say go ahead. It's good looking. The price is attractive. Full metal construction. It feels rock solid. CO2 powered ensure uh, reliable operation in cold weather. Now, most people, except me, agree the ergonomics are good. And yeah, I really brought this gun, even I'm not a fan of P226. Alright, last but not the least, holster. The Safari, Safari, Land, uh, Safari Land 579. Uh, Profit holster can fit this gun. So that's the end. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.